The next exercise will be progressing in hue and value by changing one of the two colors in these three exercises. And the next color we'll be working with as our base coat will be a cadmium orange. Cadmium orange is a couple of steps up uh, in the yellow scale of the palette. But uh, in the other aspect of it is that cadmium orange is also a, a much denser color. Very vibrant, uh, strong color, but it also uh, has a semi-opaque and sedimentary quality to it, uh, as do most of the cadmium colors, whether it's cadmium red, um, a cadmium scarlet, or cadmium yellow. Cadmium green is another color as well, and it's just the weight of the natural pigments that make up the cadmium. Here I'm applying it in different degrees, and I'm actually going to be lightening it by putting in more water in this case. So by changing the controls for yourself, you're able to uh, also achieve different effects. Uh, so in this case, I'm letting some of the quality of brushwork affect the degree of darkness or lightness. So I'm thinking about value, thinking about shading, thinking about light quality or light direction. Uh, in actually adding more water in some areas and adding more direct color. I'm not worried at this point about branches, it's just basically the tree shapes and using this as an exercise to recall some of the tree shapes that you see in your immediate neighborhoods, in your immediate environment. Uh, I'm adding in some pretty strong orange and spotting it in different areas. I want to increase the value and the chroma on the left side uh, because I'm taking the opposite tack from the previous exercise and assuming the light to be coming from the right. And at the bottom, now I'm going to add in the same blue, the Prussian blue. And I'm going to add it very, very diluted <clears throat> at the top. And I'm actually going to use it in a, almost this rolled kind of fashion so that I get some of the orange to come through. What's going to happen is that because they are complementary colors, uh, in color theory you have orange and blue as complementary colors, a certain dynamic, a vibrancy, a real electric effect is going to happen in using these two colors in combination. Uh, not everything in watercolor has to be a super strong color uh, or uh, extremely vibrant uh, in its application. Uh, things can have very light and generous quality and wispy quality depending on the atmosphere, depending on where it is in the space of the drawing and you can adjust the flow of the color as well as the, the saturation of the color. Here you can see I'm adding in more of the blue and I'm actually watching the paper as it is absorbing the color and in some cases going out of the scope or the range of the orange field and just adding pure blue and letting that merge back in. By working on an easel like this, it also gives you the, uh, the experience of plein air painting, uh, working outside for those artists that like to work uh, out of doors. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to see how the colors can merge uh, very nicely in a uh, easel environment with the tilt of the easel. I'm actually lifting some color off because I want to have a pretty deep, strong trunk down here and um, also controlling each time I dip my brush in the water, each time that I dip my brush into my pigment pool on my palette, I'm getting a feel for just how much moisture is in the brush and how much moisture is in the mix so that I can actually control the degree of pigment going to the surface of the paper. Here I'm adding in more of a indication of branching for the tree, and I'm extending it down beyond the field, the drawn field that was on the paper here, but with the intent of showing the movement and the control and the twirl of this round brush. I'm still using the number 12. This is a Robert Simmons brush, and since the light is coming from the left, I'm going to add in the sense of a shadow in here.
and I can soften that shadow by taking that field of color and just adding water to it, like so. Now I'm watching it dry. I'm going to be going back in with some of the orange again. And again, it's going to create a neutral, almost a, an ochre kind of color. And again, depending on the amount of moisture, I'm not putting any additional moisture other than what's on the palette uh, into this mix. Some of it's dried on the surface of the palette. Uh, some of it is, some of it is, uh, has more moisture to it. And by adding that pure pigment into the field, uh, you can see the degree of saturation and the way it's intermixing. And the idea is to get a sense of realism, uh, try to achieve the light quality that uh, you're envisioning with the direction of light coming from the right and shading the area to the left. Uh, this is just elaborating a little bit further on uh, some of the detail, shaping the form of the tree itself. Uh, this depends on your own preferences, uh, what you have by way of uh, photographs or a vista out of your kitchen or a studio uh, to a tree that you might be painting uh, as a reference for this exercise. And the same thing with adding in uh, some more pigment, some strong pigment of the Prussian blue. Again, the degrees to which you experiment is uh, really a function of uh, scale, your time, and the extent of chroma and effect that you want. Uh, the other part of this is that uh, the don't be afraid of the stroking. Don't be afraid to leave some of the strong pigment in there. Watch what the painting is doing. It'll tell you a lot about where the piece needs to go and what ways in which you can uh, accent it. Uh, the idea is that this is, this is fun that it becomes a, a vehicle for you to feel comfortable with mixing these kinds of colors and then uh, seeing what the effects are. You have the visual record of the effects of this kind of study that then informs your, uh, your studio work or your plein air field work. Uh, and next we'll transition into a, another combination of a yellow and the same blue uh, in order to see the uh, hue, that, the exciting hues that derive from just mixing two simple colors.